In this lecture, we are going to build a system that shows a visual red feedback on the slot if we try to drag an item into an inventory where this item type is not allowed. Let's get started. Begin by navigating to the WB item slot widget located in the UI, widgets, inventory folder and open it. As a quick reminder, this widget is a child class of our WB item slot master widget. You can open the parent class by clicking the small pencil icon in the top right corner. Let's do that now. Here we can see the full hierarchy of the slot. Select the button element, in my case it is called button underscore 193. Rename it to slot button and make sure the is variable checkbox is enabled ah because we want to access this button from the child class. Compile and save the widget once, then close it and go back to the WB item slot widget. Zoom in a bit so we have a better view of the layout. Now we want to create an animation for this widget. In the bottom left corner of the screen, click on the animations tab. This opens the animation timeline, where we can define visual effects such as fades, scale changes, and other property animations directly inside the widget editor. Next, click on the plus icon labeled animation to add a new one. Name it button hover. This name is important because we will later reference the animation by this exact name in our blueprint logic to trigger it at runtime. Once created, the preview section will indicate that button hover is currently the selected animation. To begin adding animation targets, click the add button located just to the right. A drop down will appear with various options. When you hover over all named widgets in the drop down, you'll see a list of all the named elements available in this widget, including inherited elements from the WB item slot master. That means we can animate widgets even if they are defined in the parent class, as long as they are marked as variable. From this list, select slot button, the widget we renamed earlier. By doing so, it is now linked to the current animation and appears in the timeline below. This prepares it for any keyframes or effects we want to define in the next steps. Click the small plus icon next to slot button to add a new track. This opens a drop down list with several property categories such as render transform, rendering, interactions, and more. Each of these categories lets you animate different aspects of the widget, position and scale, color values, visibility, interactivity, and so on. In our case, we want to animate the background of the slot button. The background color is part of the appearance settings under a property called background color. Select that entry from the list. Once selected, the background color track appears under slot button in the timeline panel. You can expand it to reveal its components, R, G, B, and A. These stand for red, green, blue, and alpha, which together define the final color including transparency. Each of these entries can now be animated individually. This means that at any point in the timeline, we can set different values for each channel, allowing us to fully control how the color of the button changes over time. For example, we can fade the button in or out, or shift its color tone to red for a visual warning effect. Set all color channels to their default value of 1. This gives us a neutral white appearance as the base. Now grab the red slider and drag it to the right until it reaches around 0.35. This adjusts the animation timeline to that specific point in time. At this position, change the R value to 255 to give the button a strong red tint. You'll notice that several small red dots appear in the timeline. These are keyframes. Keyframes store property values at specific moments, allowing Unreal Engine to interpolate the values in between and animate the transition. Click the small circle next to background color to automatically set keyframes for the other channels as well, green, blue, and alpha. These new keyframes now appear to the right in the timeline, indicating that Unreal Engine will animate all four channels from the initial state to the red tint. You can zoom into the timeline to see the frames more clearly. Move the playback marker back and forth to preview the animation. You should now see the button's background color transition smoothly from white to red in the preview window above. That's all we need for now. Compile and save everything. Then switch to the graph tab so we can trigger this animation through blueprint logic. To manage our animation trigger logic, we are going to use a macro. A macro in Unreal Engine is a reusable block of nodes that can encapsulate logic similar to a function but with direct access to execution pins. Unlike functions, 
Macros are ideal when we need to insert conditional logic that flows directly within the execution path of an event graph. Create a new macro and name it on drag enter as anim allowed. This macro will be used to decide whether we are allowed to play the drag enter animation. Using a macro here helps us keep the event graph clean and readable, especially since we will be checking the same condition from multiple places. By placing the logic in one central macro, we avoid repetition and make the system easier to maintain and expand later. Inside the macro, we can see two special nodes, an input node on the left and an output node on the right. These define the entry and exit points of the macro, allowing us to pass an execution flow and variables, and return results back to the graph where the macro is used. Select the input node and add a new input named execute of type exec. This input defines where the macro begins when it is called. The name execute is standard for execution pins and makes it easy to follow the logic later in the event graph. Next, add another input named drag operation and set its type to drag drop operation object reference. This input will carry the drag operation that triggered the on drag enter event. It contains all the information we need about the item being dragged from the inventory, including the payload and any custom variables used for drag and drop handling. Now drag off from the drag operation input and call the get dragged slot data function from our interface. This allows us to access the item slot data that is being dragged, including type, quantity, and other inventory-related attributes we defined earlier. Now create a bit more space in the macro to continue building the logic. After calling the get dragged slot data function, add a branch node. This allows us to check whether the dragged item is actually allowed to enter the current slot. Right-click and search for get slot data. This variable gives us access to the slot data of the inventory slot we are currently hovering over. The slot data variable was originally created in the WB item slot master widget, which is why we can access it here directly from our child widget. To put it in simple terms, the drag operation contains information about the item being dragged, meaning it represents the source inventory. The slot data variable here refers to the target slot the place where the item is trying to go. So essentially, the dragged item is asking the destination slot, am I allowed to be placed here? This is the check we're going to build now. From the slot data pin, call a break node and hide all unnecessary pins. Only expose the inventory ref pin. From there, call the is slot item allowed function. This is the validation function that determines if a specific item is allowed to be added into this slot, based on inventory restrictions or slot settings. Connect the slot pin of the is slot item allowed function to the slot data output from the earlier interface function call. This represents the item's original slot, the one making the request. Finally, take the return value of the is slot item allowed function and plug it into the condition pin of the branch node. This completes the decision check and lets us continue differently depending on whether the item is allowed or not. Now let's define the outputs of our macro. Start by dragging off from the true execution pin of the branch node and drop it onto the macro output node. This will automatically create a new exec output pin. Do the same for the false execution pin. This gives us two execution outputs from the macro, named true and false. They represent the result of our item validity check. True if the item is allowed in the slot, and false if not. Compile and save the macro once, then return to the event graph of the widget. Right click and search for event on drag enter. This event is triggered automatically when the user drags an item into this widget's bounds while holding the mouse. It allows us to respond to drag actions as soon as they begin hovering over a new UI element. Next, right click again and search for event on drag leave. This one is called when the dragged item leaves the widget area, typically when the user moves the cursor away from a slot or cancels the drag operation. Now drag the on drag enter as anim allowed macro into the graph. You'll see that the macro appears with an exec input and two exec output pins, true and false, as well as a drag operation input. This structure allows us to pass in execution and drag data and branch our logic depending on the macro's result. From the event on drag enter node, connect the exec output pin to the input exec pin of the macro. Then connect the operation pin from the event to the drag operation input of the macro. What we are doing here is simple. When the on drag enter event fires, 
meaning the user is hovering over this inventory slot with a dragged item. We send the drag operation info into our macro, which then checks if the item is allowed to be dropped here. Depending on the result, we'll handle visuals and feedback differently in the next steps. Now create a new variable and name it as drag enter on. This Boolean variable will help us keep track of whether a valid drag operation is currently hovering over this slot. It also acts as a safeguard to avoid unnecessary animation calls if nothing has changed. Next, in the event graph, place a set node for is drag enter on and connect it to the false execution output pin of the on drag enter is anim allowed macro. Make sure the value is set to true. This means we are only updating this state when the item is not allowed to be dropped here so we can trigger the red highlight animation. After setting the variable, call the play animation forward node. This node plays a specific widget animation from the beginning and is commonly used to trigger visual effects like color changes or transitions in UMG. It plays exactly once unless called again. For the in animation pin, connect our previously created animation named button hover. This is the animation we defined earlier that changes the background color of the slot button to a warning red. By playing it here, we provide immediate visual feedback that the dragged item is not allowed in this slot. Now we need to repeat the same logic for the on drag leave event. Drag the on drag enter is anim allowed macro into the graph again and connect it to the on drag leave event, just like we did before. This ensures the macro receives all necessary data to evaluate whether an animation should be played when the item leaves the slot. From the false execution output of the macro, Add a set node for is drag enter on and make sure it is set to true. This keeps our logic consistent and indicates that the slot had been marked with a red visual state, which now needs to be reversed. Right after that, call the play animation reverse node. This node does exactly what it says. It plays a given animation in reverse, starting from the end and returning back to the initial state. It's useful when you want to cleanly undo a visual effect like a color fade or scale change instead of abruptly resetting properties. For the in animation pin, connect the button hover animation. This will reverse the red highlight we previously showed and smoothly return the button background to its original color, giving the user clear feedback that the slot is no longer being targeted. Lastly, don't forget to set is drag enter on to true here as well. Next, we need to create an event function that will reset the slot animation and color if an item is dropped. This allows us to clean up the visual feedback once the drag and drop operation is complete. Add a new custom event and name it on drop clear animation. This event will be triggered whenever an item is dropped onto the slot, regardless of whether it was valid or rejected, so we can clean up the animation state and restore the original visuals. Inside this event, add a branch node and use the variable is drag enter on for the condition pin. This check ensures that we only reset the visuals if a drag operation had previously triggered the highlight effect. From the true execution pin, set is drag enter on to false. This updates our internal state and confirms that the slot is no longer being hovered by a dragged item. Next, call the stop all animations node. This node will immediately stop any running animations on the widget, including our button hover animation. We use it here to cleanly cancel the red background effect without playing it back in reverse again. After stopping the animation, we want to reset the background color of the slot button manually. Right click and search for set background color on the slot button. This node lets us override the appearance of the button and apply a specific linear color. But before we can reset the color, we need to know what the original color was before we applied any animation. To do that, Scroll to the top of the event graph and right-click to add the event construct node. This event is called automatically when the widget is first created and added to the screen, making it a perfect place to initialize visual properties. From event construct, get a reference to the slot button and call get background color. Then promote the result to a new variable and name it original background color. This stores the initial background color of the button, so we can reference it later and safely return the widget to its default appearance after animations have been played. With this setup in place, we now have full control over both the visual feedback during drag and drop and the reset logic after the operation completes. Give both of the top event nodes a shared comment box and label it constructors. 
This helps keep the event graph clean and avoids having these nodes float around isolated at the top of the blueprint. Now scroll back down to the undrop clear animation function and connect the original background color variable to the in background color pin of the set background color node. This restores the original look of the slot button once the animation is cleared. Next, select the entire group of nodes in this section and add a comment box around them. You can label it animations controller or choose any label you prefer that makes sense for your workflow. As always, take a moment to align the nodes a bit. Cleaning up even small overlaps can make a big difference in readability over time. Now open the on drop function. Right after calling get dragged slot data, call the on drop clear animation function we just created. This ensures that as soon as the item is dropped, we immediately reset any active hover animations and restore the original visual state of the slot. Adjust the node spacing in this section as well so everything remains neat and readable. Compile and save your blueprint, then hit play to test it out in the editor. Like always, let's give ourselves a few items and run over to the storage that has restricted item types. First, we test dragging items into empty slots. Everything looks good so far, no visual issues when hovering over valid areas. Now let's drag the pumpkin and try to place it into the storage. As expected, the background color changes to red, which confirms that our main logic is working. However, the fade effect appears a bit too slow. Next, let's try dragging a hammer, an item that is allowed in this storage. This time, there is no red highlight at all. Everything looks correct, and the item can be dropped without any problems. Now let's test dropping the pumpkin again. As intended, nothing happens, it's a restricted item. But you'll notice that the red background disappears as soon as we leave the slot, which confirms that our on drag leave logic is also running as expected. Let's stop play mode and go back to the widget view to improve the animation timing and polish the transition effect. If you are enjoying this video, consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel. And if you have questions, feedback, or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave a comment. I really appreciate every single one. Now back in the designer view, scroll down and click on the animations tab. Select the button hover animation from the list. In the timeline on the right side, Locate the slot button row. Try to grab the small white timing handle. It might take a few tries, and drag it to the left until it reaches the 0.2 second mark. This shortens the total animation length and makes the effect feel more responsive. Then, drag the red keyframe marker all the way to that same position on the timeline. This ensures that the color transition completes exactly at 0.2 seconds. There's probably a much easier or more elegant way to do this, and if you happen to know it, let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn a better workflow, because honestly, I have no idea if this is the best approach. Now compile and save everything and return to play mode. If we drag some restricted items again, the red highlight now appears faster and looks much cleaner than before. With that, we are done for now. This is a simple and effective way to handle hover feedback for inventory slots, and a great starting point for adding more polish later on. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned how to animate widgets in a really practical and beginner-friendly way. See you in the next one.